everybody, David here. Here is a Sunday morning, and here I wanted to do a little, show you a little practicing that I do on Sunday mornings. Uh, thanks for anybody that's going to come by, and we're going to get going right away because this is going to be a little bit tougher one. And actually, on Sundays, I usually do a little bit tougher ones for myself to be, practice and um, try different things. And today, I'm going to be doing uh, watercolor on 300 pound arches, not arches, <laughs> Stonehenge. We were just talking about arches yesterday in class, but um, we're, we're using Stonehenge, Stonehenge Aqua Cold Press, uh, 300 pound, and I'm gonna be using Holbein watercolors, and I may even do a little bit of um, gouache. Uh, this is my gouache palette, and um, I may use a little bit of that in the end. Um, Let's we'll see how it goes. And again, I'm practicing. I'm gonna try to practice. I've not done a lot of portraits in um, recently um, in watercolor. I've done some, but not this you know just where it's a portrait and so let's just get going right here so normally i'm outside like when when the weather's nice i'm gonna be getting outside again uh, with watercolor it's kind of tough doing it when it's like right now it's really freezing this weekend <laughs> for some reason we really got down in the temperature hey maria and so um portraits let me tell you the first thing about portraits <laughs> and you better have a good drawing so um, when it comes to um Portraits, unless you have a style that's very unique and it's very loose and where it doesn't matter if it's a little bit off the drawing and stuff, then it's okay. Go ahead and um, do whatever you want with the drawing. But um, when you're doing a portrait, like classical portrait and stuff, you really have to watch out the drawing. And actually, you're almost drawing with your watercolor when you're kind of doing this, and especially with gouache. But I pencil it down first for anybody who's new to watercolor. I do pencil it down first and that way I can then just put my color on top of this. Now uh, with watercolor, like watercolor, I go from light to dark. And so that's the same thing with a portrait. Um, here the background is some lights in there, but I'm going to, I'm going to make it so that I'm going to do her face first because most of the, most of the lights are in her face. Now the background here that you see in the, in the photograph right here, it's actually a saxophone player back here, which I'm not gonna do like that because it kind of um, is right here tangent with her forehead. The, um, the saxophone player's head is like kind of that. So I'm gonna make this circle of confusion back here. So I've got my, I got my stencil ready where I'm gonna be using my stencil to do some circle of confusion circles in there and I'll rub those out later. And so when I'm doing this stuff in the beginning, I will do some of this stuff to make it look like there's something going on back there, but very lost edges. So you don't really see what's going on blurred. It's more about her. And so I want to bring her up. And so basically what we're going to do is like we do everything else. We work wet into wet to get my soft edges first and I work my lights. So I'm just going to go right into her face, wet her face. And so I'm just going to go wet her face. And if you need to have highlights like on the nose in there, you could um put masking fluid there and then let it be white you know very light and stuff but instead i'm going to maybe use some um, gouache i'll just use gouache to put that in there on top and it'll be thick watercolor but it's just a lot easier and it just works just as well if i can't go around it when i'm painting and which i maybe can't because again i am doing wet into wet and it will bleed you know a lot of stuff will bleed and be soft edged but I'm wetting her face and you still work large areas. And so you notice how I'm, I'm gonna stop maybe right here to, for wetting it because um, by the time I get down there, it's gonna be dry again. And so you just have to watch it. Morning, Pamela. So here we are wetting it all, wetting into the hair because the hair is gonna be dark. And I'm going to start out with, in this, in this photograph, there is white um, for the flesh tone right here. It's very white because it's very shiny. I can decide to keep it white or I can make it a little tint of something. And I think I'm going to keep it white. And so I'm just going to go from there on to like a more pinkish. And so since I worked a lot of landscapes here recently, um, my colors are a little dirty when it comes to my pinks in here and stuff. So I'm just going to wash them off really quickly, the top little layer. It's just a little bit. So I'm going to start out with a little bit of pink. I'm just going to put it in there just to make the lights a little bit warmer. And you notice I'm going right to the forehead here because I know this is light right there of the person's head and back, but I'm going to make that a little bit darker than the face so that you get that shine look on her face. 
So, and then right here in her forehead is light. And as we've been talking about all week and all the last two weeks is about working wet into wet. And when you're working wet into wet, you're getting soft edges and that's exactly what I want. And also remember that it, everything gets about 20% lighter. So all that takes into account how much pigment you put down. And that's what we've been practicing to be able to put it down enough pigment so that it, it is nice and thick and you get the edge that you want because this edge right here has to be soft but it has to be gradual and so it's like a gradation and so i'll go in there with a little bit darker a little bit of and i've got to watch i gotta watch my brush now because my brush is filled with water so i tap it on my pot towel and i kind of go in here and i'm gonna work it and work it slow and you can help it along a little bit like where the edge is Put a little violet, a little violet where it trying to transitions to the light. Because also, depending on what's around here, I could make this a really red light or I could make it a blue light. And I did put some blue in here. I, t I blew some things with Photoshop. So I'm going to blow some blue into this shadow also. And a little violet, violet and blue, I will put into this shadow also. Because when a person has um, the flesh is a little bit wet and you know, when you're perspiring, you're going to be shiny. You're going to have a little bit of shininess to it. So you'll pick up a little bit of the light. And anything that's shiny, when we talked about shininess, is that when something's shiny, you reflect what's around it. It's like a mirror then. And so that happens on, also on flesh when a person is, you know, sweating. <laughs> and usually a performer is sweating because they're really working hard and singing. I'm going to put some violet into my red. I'm using kind of a, a burnt orange. For the flesh tones of this singer but that doesn't mean i don't put other colors in there and i'm not worrying about the hair because the hair is darker i just want to get this um, beautiful look of of warmth in the flesh in the in the um in the warm tones here in the front and if you don't use it thick then it's just going to bleed all over right and so if you need to use white to dull down your um or make your pigment your light pigment thicker that's an all okay thing to do because it will still look it will still look transparent and you're holding back the pigment from the water so go ahead and use your use your um white and your pigment to make it bleed not so far i use it to control my pigment And so I'm going in here, I'm getting, I'm trying to get the right values, the right values of the, of the face and it's all soft edge, right? And so this is why we've been working so hard on trying to teach you how to work wet into wet and being able to float your pigment. This is the exact reason because this is what, how you would do a portrait because there's a lot of soft edges in there and you have to control the edge enough because if you're off a little bit on your drawing with a portrait, it's gonna it's gonna show. It's gonna be a, a little bit more um, be able to see it more than if you're doing a landscape where a tree, branch of a tree is off a little bit. Here, the drawing has to be on. You cannot be even a little bit off. And you notice how I'm not putting my brush in the water very much because I have water down here, and I just gotta hurry up a little bit so that I can just keep on going with my my pigment bleeding only so far and I also got to make it 20% darker than it actually is because if I don't then when it when it dries it will um, not be the right value so I'm gonna go try to get the values right away I don't want to go my uh, second wash into this I want to get it all in the first wash second washes in watercolor you always get worse and worse as you go along. So you got to try to get the washes when you when you put them down first. Let me make it a little bit darker. And if that means a little bit thicker paint inside a wet wash, that's fine. There's nothing wrong with more paint as long as it's floating. And floating pigment is soft edged. So that's what we want. We want it nice and soft edged. And watch your watch your um, paint too. Watch the um, paper so that it, it stays wet. And so I'm going to wet it a little bit more right here. 
up here i can't touch that anymore because i lost all the edges right there so i'm done with that i cannot go back into that area so watch where you're painting and get it done and keep on going down as you're going down you're gonna just you have to take a little bit of violet a little bit of violet in here and then we're gonna take this down it's not as fast and it's not as um you know loose as when you're doing a a landscape because there's a more you got to take into account i've got to take into account all the values and i got to take into account how much water is in my brush so it's a little bit tougher and i really don't teach this because most of the people i teach are beginners and for one they don't have the drawing right and if you don't have the drawing right you might as well not even paint it yet will work more about in your drawing because you have to know what to push back put forward and drawing teaches you that what needs to be forward back lights and darks very important the shape of the um, person you know there's a the nose is forward the eyes are back and so all that stuff takes into if take into account what's happening here i'm going to wet it a little bit it's starting to dry a little bit here so i'm going to put a little bit more water there I don't want to put too much water there because again I, I want to keep it wet but I want to save some of the white of the paper and this is a uh, really controlling I mean you have to really learn how to control your pigment so that um, you get exactly what you want you know when you're putting down you know how much water is in your brush and if it's wet you can just push things around see I'm just pushing things around it's still floating I'm using enough pigment that it is nice and thick. Here's a little violet. A little violet back here behind her ear. Inside her ear. So it's not as floaty, if that's a word. It's not as floaty, my pigment, because I don't want it to bleed too far. I want to kind of, I'm like, kind of like spreading it. I'm spreading the paint pigment on so that it is thick enough that I can spread, but it is still floating on the top of the surface. It's almost like sculpting in a way. Um, the fact that you have a lot of pigment in your brush and you put it down and you, and you let it float into the pigment and it makes an instant soft edge, which is great. I mean, that's what you want. Now his chin, the chin is starting to dry. So I got to get some clear water in there and her mouth too. I got to get some clear water so that it all is evenly wet. Go ahead and ask questions. I can't look up as much at the moment because I really have to watch what I'm doing and timing is everything and when you're doing portraits with the amount of water you got down. And and if you do get watermarks, um, too much water, then you can kind of bleed them away. I'm gonna take my smaller round brush. I'm drawing her nose now. And so I'm gonna get the nose in there. So I'm just gonna start out with like a harder edge right here purple you need to have a lot of pigment and you need to be able to control it by taking the water out of your brush take the water out of your brush you don't need water in your brush because you have water on the paper you just have to control the amount of pigment that's how far it's going to bleed again that's why we've been that's why we've been practicing this all last two weeks i've been teaching you how to do wet into wet and trying to control that soft edge Hard edges are easy and there are people who do portraits with all hard edged and that's fine too. Um, you can do hard edged. Uh, I like to have a little bit of soft edge in there just because it's, for me, it's becomes a little bit easier to show what's going back and front. And, um, and I can use really dark colors where if you're, when you're using light, when you're doing um, hard edges, you have to use a lot of, a lot of um, light contrasty edges so that there's no contrast it's more about the lights being very closely related and that you don't have big contrast like I have here and you notice I'm doing a lot in the face right now because it's my lightest area and I might as well you know go with the face right away because if I screw up the face why do the rest of the painting <laughs> so then you can kind of pretty much say okay yeah no it's going okay I, I can go on I can move on so here's her nose and then the little wing of the nose right there get a little bit of violet in there because again it's wet parts of her nose are wet 
and um, shiny. And so I'm going to pick up some of the colors that I'm later on going to put in there. See, there's a lot of violet into the, into the, so I have a little bit of violet going on in the background. And this is not my super, super detail yet. Like I'm going to go in there, get the eyelashes and the, and the nostril and the, you know, things like that. The eyebrows, that's later. I'm getting the big areas still. Now her lips, um, she doesn't have much lipstick on and I'm not really red. So I'm not going to add that. I'm just going to make them. They are very dark on the bottom part of the lip. Ooh. And watch out how much water you have on your brush. Really learn how to work wet into wet, wet on dry. It's really important that you be able to know how much pigment you got on your brush and how much is on your paper, and how far it's going to bleed. And so here there's a shadow that goes right through here. And like I said, it is a lot more um, time consuming because of you're doing little small parts in the beginning here. But that's important. You, know, you have to get it right. You cannot be off. You can't be off not by anything because you're off by even a you know quarter of an inch. You're that's off. That's off a way a lot. And then the top of her it goes to dark right here. And then the whole side of her lip right here gets really dark. So I'm going to bleed that into the into there. Practice drawing. That's another thing I can only tell you is that you need to learn how to draw. Because drawing is like the shape of the, of the portrait, of the face. I had many years of life drawing and... Um, I realized that I didn't learn like what I should have learned and what I didn't learn what I brought back to the American Academy was that you have to learn to memorize the the figure and the depth of things and not so much about that you're just tracing what you see up there you've got to kind of look at your look at the things and see what the dimension is of, of the pieces of the face and memorize it and we don't memorize when we were in school. I didn't, and so when I got my job as an illustrator, I couldn't do the job that I was supposed to do, and that was to create. Now this is all dry, so I'm gonna have to re-wet all of this now. See, this is all got dry. And I'm gonna get a watermark right there, but let me show you how to re-wet something. So I'm gonna re-wet this area. It's gonna give me a little bit of a watermark here, but if I just take pure water, just lay it back in there, I just got to do the bottom part here. Got to re-wet the whole bottom here. I will have a little bit of a watermark here because that's starting to get too dry. But we're gonna go back like this. Hopefully, it won't be too bad. I, I was talking too much. I forgot to look up there. But that's okay. You can just uh, I'll rub it and. When I let it dr totally dry, then I can go back in later on also and um, re-wet the whole shape again. But I just have to get in here real quickly and get a little bit of this. Now I'm going to get some thicker darks. Even if you are not a great drawer and you trace this, it's still going to be hard for you because tracing is okay to get the shape and everything of it, but you still have to know things about when, when you're drawing that you can't know when you're just tracing something. You know, it's tracing is great to get the actual line there, but you have to, drawing is not all about just tracing and copying what you see. It's knowing the dimensions of things, knowing the dimensions and the depth of things that are happening in the in the picture it's like knowing that the nose comes sticking out farther than the lips and uh, where the where the eyes and lined to the to the mouth and all those type of things knowing all that and then just just copying something what if it's wrong looking in the photograph you got to be able to change it just because it looks so doesn't look right in the photograph you can change those things and make it look right by changing it in your drawing changing it in your painting you don't have to stick with what you see in the drawing if the drawing is wrong or if the photograph is wrong i should say 
a lot of times the photograph is wrong. It's not what it is. It, it's just because the lens may bend something wrong. And so you have to watch that out for that kind of stuff. And that's what drawing helps you because you realize then what's right and wrong on a picture, on a photo. When you, when you draw and you have tons of light drawing, you memorize, memorize the shape. So I could take her at any angle, rotate her head, and I could still draw knowing what things are going to be dimensionally. And that took time. I mean, it took time to learn how to memorize all that stuff. And it's a lot of drawing, a lot of sketching. I would say I do was more sketching than drawing and doing portraits. Or it was more about just sketching in my sketchbook and sketching from out looking at the things when I'm actually drawing it. I'm putting out a book and you know, I kept on saying this, but it's already written. I just have to get the pictures done where I show you how to practice your um, drawing by memorizing the objects, by memorizing what you're looking at and then drawing it from your image, from your mind's eye, not from just looking at the subject matter while it's right there. Cause that's, you know, that's easier to take in, take your drawing and just copying it from where it's right there in front of you on stage. And that's what we learned I, all the time I was at the American Academy. That's how I drew. When I got out and I had to draw from my imaginations, I couldn't do it. And so that kind of pissed me off. <laughs> and I felt like they ripped me off the, the American Academy. And so I went back saying, hey, I want to teach a class where, you know, you, nobody taught me how to work from my imagination. And so to work from your, from your mind's eye. And so learning that then through just p sketching a lot, I thought maybe I'll do a class like that. And I went to Shapiro, Irving Shapiro, who was my mentor and my boss. And I said, hey, can I teach a class on that? And he goes, absolutely. And so he gave me a class like that, the American Academy of Art. And um, I realized then though, that it's something you can't teach, you can guide. I can guide you in that thing, but you have to do it. You have to go in and you have to basically um, work every day, work every day and sketch and and so my book is going to be 66 pages long. So they say that in 66 days, you create a habit. And so there's 66 pages long and every day you're going to do a sketch and you're going to learn how to memorize it. So what I'm doing now here is because I let this part dry, I'm going to have to wet it, re-wet this area and kind of just blend this into the upper part because it's now, now it's dry and I'll blend it into that area. And so we'll keep that at that point right now. We'll just go away from that and let that dry and then keep on going. See how there's a little bit of wetness and dryness that I shouldn't have had happen. But, you know, like I said, when you're doing a demonstration and you're talking, you're doing all kinds of things. So it gets, a, gets out of hand sometimes. It <laughs> gets, gets, gets away from you. So now let's just wet this whole area here. I'm going to keep on work, working my way down. And now I'll do all this area. So wet that evenly and then just work on, work it, keep on working it down. And when I wet an area, I try to make it as even as possible so that um, I know that everything that I put down will be the same. Like the amount of pigment I put in my brush now, I know it's pretty even now. So one area is not wetter, one area is not drier. It's pretty close to the same. So I know how much pigment to pick up. So now I'm just going to go in here and I mix some gouache in there once in a while, just because I, I don't know, I just, it's thicker, it's more, um, thick gouache. And so if I want to use a, a little bit thicker pigment, then I go for some of the gouache. And I like that little bit of purpley blue that I have up back here. So I'm just going to throw a little bit of that back there. So you can also take pigment out. While it's wet, you can take pigment out by just um, letting it absorb back into your brush. See, I just took some out. I took a little bit of that out of there. And now I'll go back in with some maybe thicker blue, some gouache. Maybe some purple. And this is still very um, um, transparent because I'm using it in a wash and it's above the, um, above the paper. So it's going to stay nice and nice and transparent. And I should be doing the lights first, but since this, um, I want to get this before it dries this area, put that in there real quick. Then I'm going to go in here and just get my light.
colors, some light colors in here. There's a collarbone. And there's your, some of the muscles in the neck. Now stuff like that, it's, you know, it doesn't have to be exact, but it, it's there. So it's a good way of showing that it's more real when you put those type of things in. Knowing that is just another thing that's good for your drawing. Knowing the drawing and how to draw from your imagination, even though it may not be here. Let's say it wasn't there like that exactly. Then you could put it in because you know. You know you've drawn other things and you... And pretty much if you generalize a face or a, um, a person's portrait, like with anything, once you get to know it, then it's not the exact dimension, but you know it's there. I'm not sure if that makes sense. It's like you get to know things about it and then you just generalize. And then you look at where her collar is and where, you know, it's just, it then it's individually what that person looks like. So now we're gonna go in here and get the shadowing. And so here I'll put some red, nice red, because I want to do some coloring. And also, let's say I didn't want to make this so, um, this portrait exactly like a photograph. I want to make it more maybe abstract in some ways or do something in it so that it looks more artsy. Like maybe I can spatter it or I can, um, you know, I, I, I was taught by Jean Peterson. I took one of her classes and we started out first with, um, and it was more acrylic. And so we weren't doing like a watercolor technique, but we would just make a ground surface of all kinds of fun things. And then we paint the thing on top of that, which is kind of fun. Cause then you'll have like little things happening in your portrait that wouldn't actually be there when you take a photograph. It's just there because it's more artsy and you use the board that had like make more, more of a collage to it. Look up Jean Peterson. You're going to see some of her great work um, on her, on her website. Jean is also a um, Holbein artist, and so she also loves using Holbein like I do. And a lot of those artists, um, like myself, like to use other mediums besides just one. Like, I like using a little bit of um, watercolor together with gouache, together with acrylics, together with, you know, whatever. It's all water-based, and so why not? You know, it's fun to have a little bit of everything in there. And once you learn that it's just pigment, and it depends on how thick the pigment is, you know, I, if I use this like oils, I can use this like oils. Gouache, I can use like oils. I can make it so thick that I can actually scrub it on there. So there we have, I think, all the flesh and, um, to where the big parts of the flesh are done. And now I'm going to go into the hand real quick, and then we'll do the dress, and then we'll do the background. And actually, this, um, let's do the mic real quick because the mic is a light area. And so it's going to reflect. It's, it's, again, metal and shiny. And so what does that mean? It's like water. It reflects what's around it. It doesn't have a color. It's white, basically. Silver is pretty much a white. And it's reflecting things around it. So I start out with the lightest light. Maybe leave some of the white alone so that it's reflective of the white in the room, the light in the room. And so I'm just going to put in there the light area. And then there's going to be some blue over here, right? We, we established that we're going to be using some blue. So let's put some blue on up here, like I see in the photograph. Like, a lot of times I don't look at the photograph because it's all, it's all going to depend on me, what I'm putting as light and dark in it. So I'm just not tracing the, the painting to a, to a T. Like, not exactly like that, because I have to do other things maybe. Maybe I'm going to put other things into that when I'm going along. So maybe I'll put a little bit of blue in there. And that means that I would have to put blue, maybe reflecting somewhere else in the picture. If I'm putting this kind of blue in there, you know, put that blue into the flesh because maybe her hands are really sweaty. And so again, reflective surfaces create colors from around it. It's not just what you see there. It's what's all around it. So now I'll do her hand. And then this, I might as well put that into the mic right away because that's going to be the color that's going to reflect into the mic because the mic doesn't have a color. It's silver and it's shiny. And it won't look like um, a, a totally a mic until I get the, the, um, the whites 
or the darks, I mean, the detailed darks in there. That's when things start looking like what they are, is when you put detailed darks in them. I'm putting lights. Again, I'm still working on my light area. Now, this was a really intense light area because I had to put my darks and my middle tones in there right away because that's a big area. So I just had to get that done. Again, if you have any questions, I will look up every once in a while. And I do these, this is not a paint along, this is just um, showing you how I'm painting. Because I practice usually on Sunday mornings, I usually go out. I try to do some plein air painting, but again, because it's so cold, I don't want to go out there. It's very, very cold. Yesterday was extremely cold here in Illinois. And windy. And so it just, man, I couldn't, couldn't imagine being out there with that wind. And so now we're going to get this all wet, nice and wet. And then we'll, um, we'll put in our lights. That's her arm. And this will be her dress on this side. So this is her arm. And the background's dark, so I can wait that later. So I can, actually, I can go beyond the fingers and stuff and don't have to worry that so much because that's going to be darker later. Now let's, now let's shadow it. And again, the shadowing is, I want to get the shadowing in there while it's wet so I can get some soft edges. And here's knuckles right here. And so again, it's a little bit slower. It's a, and depending on her fingernails, what does she have her fingernails, you know, does she have her fingernails done white? You know, does she put white nail polish on or what does she do? So you have to look at that. Orange in here looks like, a little bit darker. And then we've got this going on the edge here. And see how I can control the edge? Even though this is all wet, I can control the edge. It's all about how much pigment you have in your brush. It always is, and that's again why I teach you how to do soft edges and how to float your pigment. Because it's all related. It's all about learning how to create and control this watercolor. And you need to know how to do that. You need to know how to control that soft edges and make edges that are soft so that you can blur away things and make things look like they're um, out of focus. With a hard edge, you can also make it out of focus, but that's a different style. It's a little bit more hard edge style. If everything's hard edge, it's fine. You know, it all depends on your composition and what you have going in your composition. This will give you another um, attack that you can use on your thing. Now look what happened here because of the light and Murray said so that's gonna be, so I'll, I'll show you how to get rid of that because I have to wet this whole area again then and I have to rub it a little bit right there so I can get rid of that line because that, that's gonna you know, be kind of distractive. And at the same time, I can make this eye darker anyway. So uh, it'll be my second wash on the face, which will be okay, but you have to wait till it totally dries and I can go back in. And even if I were doing this without showing you guys, I would be really busy. Sometimes that happens because you're working so fast and you, you know, you're not paying attention and you're looking all at something else and you're really like down here, if I'm doing the fingers and all of a sudden this finger just got dry or that's, um, it happens. All that, all that also happens because sometimes the weather around you is really dry and the temperature is really humid. So maybe it stays wet too long or too dry. There's so many different things that happen when you're doing watercolor. And yes, it is kind of a tougher, when it comes to that, it is a little tougher. When That's a you don't see many people doing portraiture in watercolor. But, you know, it's it's doable. You can, you know, you have to learn. Just keep on practicing. Everything's about practicing anyways, right? So you just got to keep on practicing it. You'll get it. really loving watching how many of you are becoming more skilled at your watercolor by um, listening to my some of my lessons and stuff. I really, I, that's why I do it. It's just so neat to see you guys get to a point where you can do it. And especially the soft edge stuff. Um, I really enjoy teaching this time, this stuff, because it will change your paintings dramatically if you can start doing some hard edges and soft edges together. You know, it's, it's a definite a game changer if you can do soft edges. Because that shows me that you can control. You can control the edges. It's easy to do a hard edge like that where it's it's all it's all dry. You just put it down. That's, that's easy because you're just putting it down and getting a hard edge. 
It's being able to control enough pigment to let it only bleed so far. That's the hard part. But you can do it. You can do it. You just keep on practicing it. I mean, there was a time when I couldn't do it either. I mean, it was really tough for me. But just keep on doing it. Keep on practicing it until you can do it. See, I'm just, it's wet and then I just put enough pigment. And the, I think the biggest problem that I see most people with when it comes to watercolor is they don't use enough pigment. They're very stingy with their pigment. And so you're not using enough of it. And so don't be stingy with your pigment. You need it to create things. And then the people that do are stingy, they're, they're going to have a lot of high key paintings. They're going to be a lot of paintings that are not going to have much pigment on them. And they can look high key and they can look really cool too. But they'll never get like a really wet into wet wash that looks like, you know, where you see the granulation. And so that's one thing you will not get if you're not going to use enough pigment. All right, now let's do her light dress. Her dress is sparkly. And there's where I could actually put in masking fluid and do some of the, the beads that she has on her dress. But I'm going to just take um, gouache and just put it on her thick. So I'm not going to worry about that. So now I'm going to wet the whole area. And again, I didn't do the detail part of her fingers. I did more of the large areas of her finger. You know, I did the large darks and lights of their fingers. Let me get back into here because it didn't get dark enough. It dried. And that's the biggest thing too, is learning how to go darker than you think it's going to be because really it is. It's always darker than after it dries, it's going to get a certain darkness to it or lightness to it. So you really have to learn how to put more pigment in and make it darker than it actually is going to be because it dries 70% lighter and so you have to make it 20% darker and that this is going to be the, the microphone that'd be really dark that's going to have a sparkle on the side so we can do that and so that's just what the what the dress what the dress and let's just get the shadowing on the dress and we don't have to worry about the sparkles right yet because that's small and i'm going to put that in with um with gouache and that's okay you know don't feel like Oh, that's uh, that's wrong. You know, he, he's putting it in with gouache, so that's uh, opaque. You know, it's fine. It'll be absolutely fine. I'm gonna make it kind of violety her dress, and then I'll put some. First, I kind of put the color in the light area, and then I'll put the shadow of that color into there. So it's kind of a, a lavender kind of dress. I'm gonna make only because it's my favorite color, and so. <laughs> I should put a little of that blue in there though too. That's probably a little bit of that in there too. So I may have some blue light in here. And this will be really dark shadow down here. And again, if, like I said, first I'm getting the light stuff, going in there with the light color. And then, oh, I forgot her arm over there. This is her dress halfway. Oh, we can do that later in a second. There's the lights. Now let's get our darker, now let's get our dark shadow in there. And so I'm going to take some of the color of the purple and this red that's going to be shining into the shiny dress. And let's just put it in there. See there's a little bit of orange some, from somewhere coming in. This, this dress is sparkly, so I want to make the sparkles come out even in the shadowing. Goes around here. And it's really dark down here. I'm going to mix the colors I've been using. This browns and purples. Let's get that in there. Show off the shadowing. Let's put the lines in there. I think I don't get as many people on YouTube on Sunday mornings as I do on Facebook, but it's just easier for me to do it on, <laughs> on um, when I'm in my studio. Like when I'm outside, I'll be doing it on Facebook because Facebook is easy on the spot and you can get really good reception. But when I'm in my studio, I might as well do what I normally do. And it's usually really easy to do on, on YouTube. And then I don't have to re put it on YouTube. I can just put the link on Facebook then later on. You can watch me later on if you're not here. That's all cool. For all of you at church, peace be with you. 
I have been missing church a lot when it comes to Sunday mornings now <laughs> because I'm doing this. Let's see, now we're going to go into her hair. And actually, let's go into her dark now because that's pretty much my lights. And then we get the shadows coming across here. Looks like there's a shadow right there. See how I'm using all soft edges? Isn't that fun, the soft edges? I mean, it just it's, makes things easy. Soft edged. This is like a little bit there. As long as things are wet, you can go in it with um, a with your brush being wet. Let's do her hair real quickly. I'm just gonna wet this area up on top. I'm actually going to use black medium and black paint. This one is lamp black. And I will put color into that black to make it really dark. And to get a soft edge, I'm just going to wet it again. I'm making it a little bit on the edge so it's not totally straight. It's not her scalp, it's her hair. Next year, I think she has dreadlocks going back there. I want to put down here, and they're not showing, but um, might as well put them in. Let's try to put them in. So I'll go down here, wet it. And I know many of you don't like to use black, but and if you're using it, you can mix it with a dark blue and a dark red. That's fine. You can go ahead and do that. No, no problem with that. I like to use black right off the tube because to me it's very simple. And I can make it colorful right away. Down here, around her ear. blot it with my brush a little bit I still have to wet this area again but I can wait for that until later I, can, I just want to get in here and get the hair done now our ear is way too bright and so I'm just going to tone that down I don't want it to stick out so far that it, it's just so I'm just going to put a, like a, a little wash over it with a little bit darker I'll give her an earring And then let's put some of her hair, her locks coming down. And come in front here, and then I'm just gonna make it red, shiny. Bring it down. The one comes across here. This is all dry now, so it's gonna get hard edges, which is what I want. I want to have hard edges. Let's go into her background. That's the next biggest thing. And so with the background now, I'm gonna um, go in there and start from top to bottom. That's the easiest for me, you know, or even go sideways, go from the face, because I have to cut out her face um, with a, I'm gonna use a brush that I can do that with while I'm wetting it. And like I said, I'm, I am gonna make the sun or the light right here shine on her, but I may put the color into that. And I also will not do all these, um, lights that are right against her face because if i do that then it kind of defeats the purpose um and it also puts right here there's a in the photograph it's not there's a tangent right here of the player behind him so i won't do that i'm just going to wet it now the area let me just wet with my big brush with the area You know, Maria says, yeah, there's a lot of people who do glazes and they keep on going over and over and over. It's a, lo a lot longer. You can do it. Um, you can go over it, but you have to let it dry. Each glaze you have to let dry. If you don't let it dry, then you're going to get, it's going to not look as fresh. So you really have to, anytime you put down paint, 
you got to make sure it's wet in the wet. So there's no like a little bit of a glaze that you just put down in an area. It's like I'm going to re-wet her face, but it has to be all wet again. Because if you do that where you're just doing parts and you're constantly putting a, a, a tint and the tint is just a little bit of color, with a lot of water. It starts looking very, um, it doesn't, it doesn't look smooth. You do not get a smooth effect when you're glazing like that parts and pieces. You cannot glaze parts and pieces. You got to do the whole area and each, each glaze that you put down, you have to make sure the first one was wet or dry after you do that. Um, it's, it's a lot longer to do. And my favorite artist of all time is Sir Russell Flint and he did hundreds of glazes, but it took him forever to do a painting. And again, it's a, it's a process that you have to do and though you have to know how to do the process and it's the thing is you can't just do parts you got to re-wet the whole area so that it looks fresh the, the best way of putting down pigment is into a wet wash and you cannot just do a little area and hope for that will look fresh because if i do something in here and i put a little bit layer and layer and layer it just doesn't give that freshness because it's not bleeding it's not bleeding well because watercolor um, softens itself. You do not soften watercolor. Watercolor softens itself. So let's put a little bit of blue in here. And I have to, uh, uh, like, so if I went into this again, I just, I'll, I'll show you in a second how we're talking about when it comes to glazing and not doing it the wrong way. Because a, a lot of people do glazing because that's, they just don't, beginners don't know, want to put enough pigment in. So it's a glaze and they just go over and over again and they don't let it the second or third wash flow like the first wash the first washes are always good right i would call them sky washes people love doing skies and so everyone can do a sky really well because they do it in one wash and they leave it and so that's how every tint that you put down of wash you put down has to be done that way there's no you always do the same thing over and over again so now i'm doing this this is a light that's in the corner here and I put a little bit of purpley blue kind of on the edges here. And this is a bolder way of painting. Yes, it is bolder because you're putting down the wash. But if you're skilled enough, you can put it down and, and when wash and get it done. And that's a lot easier and a lot fresher looking than if you spend time and doing over and over. So those artists who do um, hyperrealist hyperrealism, they also get it looking really nice too. Um, but that's just doing small pieces, and there's a lot of hard edges in it. So they wouldn't be doing a wet wash like this. They do little pieces of things. They would actually put in that saxophone player. They wouldn't have a soft edge right back there. They'd actually have a person back there, very hard edged. And that's one way of doing it. Yes, you can do it that way. But being able to control your edges and being able to do soft edges wet in the wet is a is a challenge, but something that you could really use well in watercolor. So I'm calling this wetting as you go along. I'm leaving a little bit of white along the edge up here because that's what is actually happening. And I'll put some color in there. When I get down here, though, I want to go right to the edge. So I'm going to wet it down a little bit farther than where I'm going. Now I'll go in here and just really get this part done. I need to get that done now. <coughs> Excuse me. <coughs> okay, drink a cup of coffee. I'm talking too much. So yeah, Maria, try wet in the wet. It really works well. Um, it is tougher, but in the in the long run, it will be really good for you to learn how to do wet in the wet. It's one of those things that um, once you know how to do it, it's another, you know, thing you have in your arsenal, another tool you have in your arsenal to be able to create. And if you look at Mary White, my favorite watercolorist that's alive, um, she does these beautiful, really tight watercolors, but then she'll have a background that's really wet in the wet, very washy, you know, so you got to be able to do both. It's good to do both. Put some more purple in here. Now I gotta be careful because I'm gonna go close and make it look right. Because if I give her a little hiccup, you know, on her and her and the like in the nose, it'll make the whole nose look to totally different than my drawing. So go go slowly, get it done, go exactly where you need to go. 
That's why you're drawing. That's why we draw watercolors. Draw before we put on our paint. Because we don't want to be able to... We don't put it on thick. We're not like oil painters who can then go in, soften it, wet it, and put something else on it. No, we have to do it right now. And we have to get it done on that first wash. And especially, like I said, with soft edges, we have to put it in there now and move on. I'm putting a little bit of blue and all kinds of colors in the background, right? Unless you're, like I was saying, like you're doing a style that is more like what I was doing with Gene Peterson class, where I was doing a creative background that's really... <clears throat> Hold on a second. <laughs> Where we <clears throat> did like a, a abstract background and then we create the shape into the background or into the, um, put the portrait into that area. Know how much pigment's in your, in your brush compared to what is on the paper. It's so important to do wet in the wet, knowing how wet your paper is, knowing how wet your brush is. And, you know, this background could be anything, really. And um, I know there's this white line that's a, actually a saxophone. This is supposed to be a saxophone. I'm going to, like I said, I'm going to be going back in this one. This is dry and putting circles of confusion, um, circles in this so that you'll see like it's blurred out and if you if you've been following my newsletter i did a whole thing on circle of confusion circles in watercolor so i'm going to put some of those in there and you'll see in a little bit after this dries what i'm talking about all right down here we get nice and dark look at how many times you can go into something if it's wet you know and it's evenly wet and it is as long as my brush is not wetter than the surface as long as there's a lot of pigment in here, I can go into this area as many times as I want and push things around. It's when it dries and I don't see a shine anymore. Like up here, I don't see a shine anymore. So I can't, well, actually, right. That's still, actually it's still wet enough. It's knowing how wet it is and when you can go in and when you can't. And actually, if I drop little droplets of water on there, I could even make white little dots on there too. So that's not a bad thing either. this area and then do the bottom here and then we're at detail stage after this then we go into details dark details now normally when I do my paint alongs they're one hour exactly here um, it may go over a little bit of not more than an hour right now we still have 10 minutes into the um, hour but um, I may have to go a little bit longer but then again this was just practice for me this is practice for me and I'm letting you sit in with me to, to kind of just figure out uh, watch my practicing watch me practicing I mean all of us artists no matter how good you are we love to practice I love to practice I love to try different things this is not for anybody it's not a commission this is for me practicing and trying to do a portrait I haven't done a portrait in a long time uh, not quite for quite some time I've done a portrait and I want to get a little bit more detailed and I want to do some more portraits I want to try it on a different paper too I am going to be trying um, the Legion paper company is hiring me to test out their um, this new paper they got coming out um, for silver point and I've never done silver point before and so I'm going to try it just to see. It's a drawing, drawing with a, uh, to a white sheet of paper that's got clay on it. And um, they, they're making a paper. You don't have to put this clay stuff on there. And I'm going to try it. So I've never done silver point, but let's see what it looks like. And they're buying me all the tools and everything. So I'm going to give it a shot. So I've been always, I've been always working with um, Legion, Legion papers that make Stonehenge, the paper I'm working on right now. And... Um, I've been testing it since it first came out and it's a great paper I love it you know I really like it a lot and then they made a black paper and I tested that and then they made the oil paper which I'm starting to do a little bit more testing so I can't wait to get back out outside and do some more with the oils on the Stonehenge oil paper And I use um, the aqua oils that Holbein makes. And so I kind of do it like a watercolor too. I make, I start everything like a watercolor 
and I then I finish it like whatever medium I'm finishing it in. So if it's an oil, I'll finish it like an oil. And if it's a watercolor, I finish it like a watercolor. And here I even, I may use a little bit more gouache and I'll finish it like a gouache. I'll put some heaviness to it. We'll see. It all depends on what, what I'm gonna do. And again, this is practice for me. This is not, like I said, I, I'm not looking to see, to make this, nobody's gonna um, wait, not, nobody's waiting for this. I'm doing a whole series of um, singers and bands. And so I'm also practicing that. I wanna do a little bit more um, bands and singers and musicians. And I have a bunch lined up that I'm gonna be, I'm gonna be going to Canuga in South Carolina next week, next weekend. I'll be heading to Canuga and in South Carolina and I'm going to be doing, I'm hoping to get at least five paintings done down there because I think it's like we have four days, but hopefully I get five paintings done because I'm taking a class called Paint with Friends. And so some of the people that went last year are going to be there again this year. And so we're just painting together and I just, we paint in a room and there's going to be like 12 other teachers. And it's a great, if you ever been to a great, want to go to a great workshop, Canuga down in South Carolina, it's called Canuga watermediaworkshops.com. Um, check, check them out. They're very, very cool workshops. And then from there, I go to Columbus, Ohio to do a, a, um, NAMTA, I do demonstrations at the NAMTA show, um, for, um, materials like legions and and Holbein, I'll be doing a bunch of their new products, like their oil paper and um, Holbein, their gouache. I'll do a little bit of that. I'm going to do this part. See, it's not it's detailed darks, right? It's the microphone, and I'm putting it, making it look metal-like and. And it's detail and so you can get super fine and this is all determined how detailed you want to go i mean how detailed is your subject matter or how detailed is your um is your style is your style really detailed or would i go in here and spatter things and make things more um you know which i i kind of want to do i kind of want to i should have maybe done a little bit more i really love that class i took with gene peterson and i I kind of should have done that first, like do a really wild, crazy wash and then build up to that. But then it's more like with an acrylic because then you build up on top of watercolor. Watercolor in this sense is more like you put it down and leave it. And so I maybe can do this afterwards. I maybe go in there with um, some other things I can do like rub and put a stencil in there. Cause I'm going to stencil out the circle of confusion circles. And then I gotta get all her little jewelry or jewels on her dress in there. Now let's get more of her microphone. I gotta get more of the darks in the microphone now. And thanks for watching, anybody who's watching. Um, and if you have to leave at any time, it's always gonna be back here again later. So don't worry about that. It'll be here forever to, for you to keep on watching. And this whole today, I gotta get ready for that Canuga, and I gotta get ready for the things. So I'm getting a bunch of um, things to paint. I'm looking for a bunch of stuff to paint. Now, like I said, I'm doing a whole series on bands, and um, so I've got a bunch that I got to draw up. I like to have everything drawn up. It takes a while to draw it up, but to paint it, then I'll have a lot of time to paint. Just paint, because it takes a while to draw these things, and so. I don't want to spend my time down there drawing. I want to spend my time painting when I'm down there. And also when I'm doing the demonstrations at the NAMTA show, I don't want to sit there again. I don't want to draw and sit there and show them how to draw because that's not part of the, the material I'm using. And so I have everything drawn up beforehand. So I got to get that all drawn up before I go. And if you are going to Canuga, I'll see you there, guys. It's, it's a fun thing. It's a fun week. I wish it was five days like it used to be, but right now it's only four, still four days. Um, I loved it when it was five because it, it goes so by, it goes by so fast that week. And it's so much fun. You see so many artists and it's like a, it's artist camp. It's artist, um, <laughs> it's an art camp for adults. 
it's like spring break spring break um <laughs> spring break for adults who are artists you can look it up it's canuga water media workshops if you want to look it up next year i'll be teaching there so you have to sign up early um actually when you go usually everything's already booked before you go next year because we'll get a chance to book our classes for next year right away which is a nice thing for us who have been doing this for a while i've been going the last four the four times i had it i've, I've been going now this blue i got it reflected in there so i'm gonna take some of that blue thicker get some of that blue shining in there and then these lines that of the microphone I'm gonna make really hard edged and now it's time to do the darks in her face like in her mouth but before that is this dry enough now look in there yeah I think it's dry enough so I'm gonna try to go in here and wet this and soften that up because that really doesn't look good. Having your cheek that bright right there. And so I'm gonna take my water. I'm just gonna lay it on there because anything I do here now will not it will not affect it if I just lay it really lightly. So I'm putting water back over this. I'm just laying it on there very lightly. And this is how I go back in, and this is where and I like another glaze. And nothing will affect it at all if I do this really lightly. I'm just applying it, barely touching the surface, putting water down on top of it. Now this creates a nice even wash over it now. And you can't even see it, right? It's But it is all wet now again. It's all wet and it's like I'm working my first wash again. Now how do I get rid of this though? So let me show you. What you do is while this is all wet, I'm going to leave it on there a little bit. And so it's it's softening itself up real lightly. It's softening itself up again. And nothing's going to change because, again, like I said, I just laid a, a layer of water over it to make it all evenly wet again. And then I wait a little bit so it soaks in a little bit. Then what I do is I rub a little bit. I kind of blend it into each other. Um, I, I'm releasing the pigment from the paper. And I'm going to let the pigment then sit there and float on itself. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to pick, pick, pick up more pigment so that the pigment will again wash together right because it needs to be darker anyway so i need to have a little bit more pigment in there and so it's like you're working at the first wash see i'm just putting it right back in there very very important step like if you need to go back in is to let it water sit a little bit and then apply more pigment into there so that it's the same amount of pigment it's still floating it'll still look very fresh but now at least i can get my my values back I can get my darker colors in there and I can create the soft edges. I can put more color in if I need to put more color into that area. If I need it a bit darker, I can put darker in there. So look at it, it's like the first wash. And it's a glaze, it's, a not, it's like glazing also, but it's uh, not so thin. Most people that glaze, glaze way too thinly. And it's just like, they do a small layer and a, over and over again and i this is more of a direct approach where I, I go in and i put enough pigment so that it can just float on top now an arches paper will take this a little bit differently because you're it's absorbing more this paper is not as absorbent so it tends to be um it tends to pull up easier and so you it's a little bit harder in, in that aspect that to get a soft edge because it's laying on top of the surface where arches is more into the into the surface if that makes sense i hope that makes sense that a softer paper absorbs a little bit more so it's going to make your edges softer and this will be not as soft because again it's floating on top but it's definitely good for learning how to float your pigment and then letting it sit and soften itself and be very um very smooth I can see how it's smoothing itself out. I just put a little bit more pigment in, but watch your brush. Watch how much water you have in that brush. Because if you have too much water in a brush, it's just gonna um, it's gonna just go out of your brush and make watermarks. And that's what you don't want. You don't wanna make watermarks. You wanna make just a little darker edge there or a darker shade of value. 
And look at how I can blend it a little bit. I'm like blending. So it's kind of blending in a way you're helping it along a little bit. And that's cool. But then see how um, I rewet the whole thing and now it's nice and even. I got rid of that little mark in there too. So yes, you can work watercolor the same way over and over again. Now if I had to do it again, now it's almost getting too dry right here. I have to do it again. I rewet it again. So, and I will um, have to do that. But I'm not going to do that on this one for you guys because then we're going to go way over an hour. <laughs> we're already over an hour by a minute or by three minutes here. So let me just get this dark part done. The detailed darks of the microphone and her eyes. And then we'll be done. So maybe we'll go a little bit over an hour, but that's okay. But that shows you really that you can go back in. And so like her eyelashes, I want to make really dark, dark. And so I'm just going to use black. I'm just going to use solid black. Because that's what actually mascara is, solid black. So I might as well use solid black. And then her eyebrows are not so black, as black as, as that. But she's got you know, really light eyebrows. And so I'm just going to put some eyebrows in here. And then there's going to be shadows from I mean, shadows from her eyelashes on her cheek. And that's what this shadow is. It's, it's the shadow right there is from the eyelashes. And so what I can do is I can throw a little bit of shadow to make it look like that, that shadow from the eyelashes. Goes down here. And I get this part right here. Eyelashes come out here. Kind of lost it a little bit. Inside her mouth should not be a cool color. Never make the inside of the nostrils or inside the mouth with a cool color. It looks dirty. So like her nostril, make them like a, a dark, warm color. Always use like a red or something for a nostril. So here I'm going to put her nostril and make it really dark. And I, a lot of times just use red because that way it looks um, clean. You don't want a dirty nostril. And that happens if you put like a blue or something in there. So keep it nice and nice and clean. A little shadow of her nose on her flesh tone. Her ears too, same thing with their ears. I don't like to use, um, there it doesn't matter so much, but again, if you make your darks warm, they won't look dirty. And actually it's too wet here to do anything to make it um, a hard edge. So we'll wait for that. Now in her mouth, <clears throat> you see her tongue a little bit and you see her teeth. So I'm going to show her teeth by negative painting them. And then I'll just get a little bit of red warmth. And since there's saliva in her mouth, you're going to get a lot of shininess happening in there. So a lot of this is just going to be white because um, again, reflecting what's around it. So just keep it, keep it warm, keep it warm. And now I forgot her arm back here. So her arm, I better rewet her arm because I didn't do anything on her arm back here. So let's just wet that. People are, are always telling me, it's like, man, baby, you did that in one hour. You did that in so fast. It, did, it took me an hour, but you know how long it takes me to paint this type of way? <laughs> I mean, it's taken me years and years of practicing and learning. And, you know, so don't look at my speed. It doesn't matter how long it takes you to do a painting. I always get people, it's like, I'm never going to finish it in that time, kind of time. Well, I don't expect you to be able to do it in that kind of time because it took me years, many years. You know, 40 years of working my painting where I can get to a point where I can do this. And look, it's still taking more than an hour. Um, and this is more just practice, too. This is not like how I work in my studio when I'm really working. I usually work like two or three paintings at a time, for one. And then I, I work hard on making a certain look. And so here I'm just kind of practicing. I'm really actually practicing my skills on doing a portrait. Now our upper lip, I'm going to wet the upper lip and I'm going to put some color in there. Since it's, since it's wet, I'm going to put a little, put a little blue right here so that um, it reflects. In the front here, I'm going to put a little blue. 
And then a little warmth, a little orange maybe on this side. I still want to make it light. Light or colorful, one or the other. You can make it, um, you have to make it light. That's the most important thing is making the value. And then her upper lip here is a little bit darker up here. But I have to wait, I have to re wet this whole area. And I may do that later. Then we got eyelashes on this side too. We got to put in there. Now let's get now her microphone looks like it's dry, so let's go in there and get the, the microphone done. So for that I'm just gonna use a purple, black, really dark. Um, because it, it's pretty much um, you can't see anything in there anyway, so I'm just gonna make some dark lines. And you know me, I, I like putting color into my thing. So, and also when I'm doing lines, I like to do it like I'm writing. So I'm gonna do it up like this. And so I'm just gonna push down and then just do lines like this. So I'm going across. It's always put the paper in a way that makes it easier for you to draw something when you're painting. It goes around the corner here a little bit. Top part. Now detail, you know, detail is not so much, you don't learn very much on detail because I, basically what I'm doing is just find my lines that I drew on. So all I can say about detail is make sure your drawing is good. Make sure that you um, have your drawing right on so you can actually draw it. Yeah, her upper lip right there. See how it's poking forward because it, it should be a little bit more shallow, like it's going into there. And let me see, you guys have any questions? I like how you're doing wet into wet, thanks. I like your dark thing. I think the shadow in her cheek needs to be reunified. The highlight, the earlier bloom created above her cheek breaks up with a nice round shape in the shadow. But I had in there before. I, mean, I have a little bit of the cheek line. There's a little bit of a line right there. There's a little light in there. This seems like it needs to be a little bit darker here and there. I mean, that these are things I have to go back in and I have to re-wet that area and just finely detail those things and stuff. And I'll probably do that after it's all dry. And by that time... Um, I, mean, I want to show you still how to get the circle of confusions too. Oh, Maria, thanks. <laughs> you fixed it good. <laughs> and let's get the let's get this let's get this mic a little bit shinier. It doesn't have that nice shiny shiny look. It's a little bit darker. Get a little bit shinier in here. And this is actually a little bit more than shadow. So I'm going to take a little bit more than shadow and go right over it. So you can take a tint over anything. You know, you can go take, like, remember I did this wash over the face and I put water on that? You can do that to anything. Anything on this paper, I could re wet anything. And sure, as long as I apply it very gradually over the top of things, I can do that. I, I don't have to keep things the way it is, like it, when you do the first wash. Yes, I always say you want to do the first wash, but if you don't get it, you can always go back over and you can apply it on there a second time. Now, I shouldn't have done this wash. I just realized that was still wet. So those lines will blur now, but um, totally forgot that they were wet. <laughs> so make sure it dries before you go your second wash. <laughs> All right. All right. Let me just get, show you the circle of confusion. I think we'll be done. But I have to wait for things to dry. Like the ear has to be dry. 
And um, I'm going to do a little bit in her hair too. I'll get a little bit of her hair, hard edges. And let me show you, show you circle of confusion circles. So I just have this um, stencil. And um, I'm going to put it in there just to give, you know, it's like a blurriness. Because like, if you look at the picture right here, this photograph right here, look at the background. There's a, actually, that's a saxophone player and he's got a, a saxophone and it's blurred, right? And so the blurriness makes circle of confusion circles. And what I'm going to do is make things back there that you're not going to know what they are. And they're just going to be confusing, <laughs> circle of confusion circles. Now the size, I usually like to keep the size of the circles the same. It's not necessary, but um, I like to keep kind of keeping the same size. And what, how do I do that? I take a um, magic eraser. Those um, Mr. Clean magic erasers, or you can get the cheaper ones, like from the dollar store. They're all good. I, I, I rub, I pull, put them in water, and I squeeze out as much of the water I can. I tap it on my on my towel, on my towel, because I don't want it to be wet. I want it to be damp, because I'm just gonna go in here and take out some of the paint. So I'm gonna rub real lightly. I'm gonna rub lightly and i'm going to take out the paint again don't make it wet wet because if it's wet it's going to go underneath the underneath the stencil and then you get troubles so i'm going to pull it up and look what i did i made my, that part wet don't do that <laughs> and then dry your stencil because look at that it made little markings there so make sure your stencil is nice and dry let's see i got the circle right there and so paper towel Do it again and again like i said make sure that your stencil is dry and don't put any water on there because it will affect like i did right here see there's a little thing of water that i just put on there so my stencil was wet or i was holding it so what size do i use that size and so let's use another one like right here i like to overlap them too a little bit so put another one right there let me get a little bit smaller oh, this is wet too underneath here so i'm gonna Hold it up a little bit, rub real lightly. I know some people even use a brush, a damp brush or paper towel, just to rub a little bit. Get the side here a little bit more. That's another circle of confusion. And we'll put one against her head, overlapping her head. But again, watch out, don't just do it on the part. Now, don't do it over her head. Just do it next to her head. <laughs> oh, I just went right into her head, darn it. <laughs> I said, don't do it on her head. We got another circle of confusion, circle. Dry it again on your, I always dry it on my towel. Again, I always use a towel over my surface so that um, I constantly wash them and then they, they still have a lot of stuff in them, but it's so easy to have them right there. One right here. I wet it a little bit and take my paper towel and then just rub it a little bit. Circle, circle. And I have one right here above the Of the microphone. Nice and damp, not wet. Your your sponge can't be wet. It has to be just damp. I'm gonna do a smaller one next to that, and maybe not as much. Let's see if I wet my paper towel, if that works too. I wet my paper towel a little bit and just kind of rubbing my paper towel over across it. And actually, I'm going to take my paper towel right now and just going to clean this part up here a little bit. It's a technique, you know, it's pretty much a technique that you can use to make make it look like things are blurry. And I'm going to have to put one right here because I, I messed that up with uh, put a drop of water on there. So I might as well do one down here too. 
since I already have a mess down there. And so I'm just going to take that water, rub it a little bit, give a little bit of thing down there. So what do you think about the circle of confusions? <laughs> it's just something different. It's a way of showing um, things happening, like light and distance. That um, photographers use that trick to, um, to make things out of focus. And now the last will be her dress, and I'm just gonna rub out some of these little. She's got all these, all this bling on her dress. And like I said, I'm also going to put it in with opaques, but first I'm going to try to rub out a little bit. This paper, Stonehenge paper, is really easy to rub out. As you can see, I can rub out really simply. And it gives me a soft edge too, so I don't want all this bling to be hard-edged with the, with the paint if I put the paint on. I will color some of them. And I'll make some a little bit darker. Some darker, some lighter. Let's work her ear real quick. It's bugging me that her ear doesn't look right. <laughs> I don't like her ear looking like that the way it is. I gotta make the canal, the ear canal here. And you got that little bit of, and I like to make, uh, make, make it warm again. Otherwise it looks dirty if you don't make it look warm. And you got this little part up here. Ears are a lot you know, they're not all the same, but they have the same parts to them a little bit. You know, each one's maybe a little bit different, but they're pretty close. And so they, you can generalize them and how they, how they look. If you don't have a, a really good picture of your ear and, or if it's blurry and you can't see in there, you can always make some of that up. Look at another ear or look at yourself, look at your own ears in a mirror and just look, see what you can put, do use that for your, here's her hair a little bit. See what happened when I put the wash on there, I kind of uh, manipulate that, but that's okay too, you know. And actually I can even put sparkles on things, like I could put white and let things be like really shiny. I could put like, take totally white paint and then just put some glimmering lights in here, you know, little dots of light or like um, an edge rim lighting. I can do a little rim lighting with thick white. Now this is a no-no for TWSA. If you're doing that for like the competition, then don't do that. <laughs> you can't use any white. Open up. All right, a little bit on here and then we're done guys. I'll let you guys go. Sorry for taking all your time. <laughs> a little bit more time than an hour. But I enjoy teaching and especially enjoy teaching my Thursday nights. So follow along with my, um, with my newsletter. I, I send out a newsletter. So go to my website, beckerart.net or my name, David R. Becker. Don't forget the R. Dot com. And you can follow me and come to my YouTube channel, subscribe, and it'll tell you when I'm always doing some of this stuff. All right, I think that's it, guys. I think I'm gonna keep it at that. Oh, I wanna do some more of this. That's right. So let me put some, let's make some purpley little dots in here. Orange. Same thing over here. Down here should be darker because it's in the shadow. And the stones on her dress. Sparkles, sparkly. that right now. 
<laughs> I'm gonna take some time. I'm gonna take. I'm gonna have a break and come back for that. And that's another thing I, I should mention is that a lot of times when you're painting, um, take a break once in a while. Because when you're on painting something for way too long, like when I'm in class, I tell my students you're there for two and a half hours sitting there drawing. And when you look at anything for two and a half hours, sometimes you can't see the mistakes anymore, or you can't see what's good or bad because it all looks the same. And you've been looking at it too long. Get away from it, step back from it for a little bit, and then come back to it. Because then you can see that with a fresh eye, you get a fresh eye on it. So that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to go back up and get, uh, make another pot of coffee, uh, look at it again, and then maybe fix up a few things on it. But I think that I'm going to keep it at this for right now. Any last questions? So cool. Always fun to watch you, David. I always learn a lot. I only wish I had your talent. <laughs> well worth the time. Thank you. Thanks, Bob. Thanks a lot. Mr. Clean Magic Eraser is excellent for making the sun spots as well. Oh, thanks. Thanks, Dave. All right, guys. Thanks again for watching by, or dropping by here just Sunday morning and watching this. I will... Earring. Oh, yeah, you're right. Earring. Thank you. <laughs> I almost forgot. Thanks, Lynn. I almost forgot that yeah, she has an earring on. And it's right here. She just got like a, a light. So I'm just going to wet that right there. Blot it out. And then I put a little bit of dark underneath it. Show dark and that will be it. I can put white paint on there too. I may look again, I'm, I'll look at it later on also when I'm when I look at it again for a little bit. And um, so I'm not gonna take the tape off right now because I still may work on it a little bit. Alright, so thanks again guys. Please join me on Thursday morning or Thursday evenings at 6 30. I do a paint along and that I do want you to paint. This is not, you know, if you want to go ahead and paint this, there's the picture right there. You can try it. <coughs> Excuse me. And um, we'll see you then. All right. Have a great rest of this Sunday and we'll see you on Thursday. And then I'll talk to you on Tuesday. <laughs> and thanks, Maria, for having everybody hit the like button. Yes, please hit the like button. And it will be, and tell your friends too. So they all subscribe. We'd love to get some a bunch of new subscribers in there if we can. All right, till next time.